100, while Steve Waugh, in his 100th test, fell 15 runs short of a century. Their individual feats putting their team in a dominant position. 13 overs before the second new ball, the Waugh twins emerged, determined to maintain the initiative. Hansi Cronier playing right into their hands. Just got that one through the offside field as well. South Africa's strike bowlers held back. Steve Waugh punishing the spinners. It's a bit short and uh, he loves them there. And Mark cruising towards three figures. Shot. The pitcher changed first ball of the 81st over. Alan Donald bursting in with a bright red cherry. Oh, he gets him almost straight away. That hurt. The war's now under bombardment. He's, so he's sorting him out, isn't he? It's got him again. Mark breaking the stunned silence with a glance. Could, be it. Could go for four. His 12th four for his 12th test hundred. Three balls later, Pollock's revenge. Well, ball close. That's got him. Steve counterpunched in his feud with Donald. That's a good shot. Ponting also refusing to be tied down. So beautifully played. Ankle saw Donald spent long periods out of the attack. When he came back, Steve Waugh pounced. Adams won't get it. Five runs off the over. Ponting joined the celebration from the other end. There it goes into the weighty stand. But the class paceman had the last laugh. Got him! There, the good ball strikes. Steve Waugh making 85. Very dangerous man and in form. Bevan in at number seven, and by T Australia was 45 ahead. Excellent shot. But Simcox found the shoulder of Bevan's bat on 12. I think so. He is. He's walking. Well, there you go. A trigger for Ponting to go on the offensive. He used his feet down the pitch to the off spinner. Until Paul Adams returned for his first test wicket in Australia. It's yes, got him. Caught and bowled. That's very well bowled. Donald now with a taste for the tail. Ball him. But it's Australia it's stretching the lead beyond 100 with two days remaining. Uh, that's a good shot. Warren has five wickets. With the day remaining, only the weather can stop Australia from going one up in the series. For those with wings, a spectacular sight. But for South Africa, nothing from ground level was worth watching. Glenn McGrath and Ian Healy adding 29 this morning before McGrath's exit. Gone. Edge straight to Dave Richardson. Australia's lead, 134. A mountain for the visitors. Within minutes, Everest. Big appeal, and he's given him out LBW. That's got him, yes, he's out, caught, short mid wicket. Two for three, Shane Warne's first over, a sign of what oh, would follow. Be bold. That's almost a perfect leg break. By lunch, three for 21, Hansi Cronier, six. This could be out, two noise, he's gone. Cronier has in Melbourne, not getting it past short leg, and they're in tatters, South Africa. Warren's wonder spell leaves South Africa spinning. Seven nightly news with Peter Mitchell. Just three wickets away from victory in the second test after Shane Warren ripped through South Africa's second innings at the SCG. When rain stopped play after just three, the Proteus were reeling at seven for 85, still trailing by 49 runs. Warren taking five for 25 and needing one more for 300 test wickets. The tail enders spent almost an hour on their perch before Alan Donald tempted Glenn McGrath. Gone. Edge straight to Dave Richardson. A lead of 134. Gary Kirsten shuffling to McGrath. One for one. Big appeal. And he's given him. Out LBW. Barker two runs later. A scoop to Ponting. That's got him. Yes, he's out. Caught. Short mid wicket. That was the straight one. He was then Cronje stumbled to Warren and Ponting. Three for 21. It could be out. Two noise, he's gone. Six runs later, Gibbs trapped close in as well. Yeah! Yeah! Well, McMillan also got the run around. Five for 41. Yeah! Oh, got him! Got him around his legs. Warren then oh, snared seven. number four. Taylor Brilliant. Yeah! Yeah! Yes, yes, yes. What a catch. Beautifully bowled. Spinning it. Pollock followed by oh, Richardson. Warren's fifth. At 7 for 69, Simcox turned defence into attack. Oh, that's a big hit into the members. Rain put pay to the Warren Blitz 35 minutes before tea, making play difficult tonight. Farron Hoffman, 7 minutes. Five wickets in a row.
mesmerising the South Africans as they struggle to make Australia bat again. And the leg spinner now has ten dismissals for the match, with the mantle of Australia's greatest ever bowler in his sights. Matt Dowling has the story. And the Australians all ready for what they might be able to produce out there. What they produced, in fact, amounted to almost total annihilation of South Africa's batting order, with Shane Warne leading the way. When Warne claimed skipper Hansi Cronje, the Proteas were in dire straits at 3 for 21. But that was just the start of the carnage, as Warne turned on a one-man exhibition of leg spin at its best. The Victorians' wizardry with the ball was infectious, as one by one the South African wickets fell. Five for 41 soon became six for 55, then seven for 55 when Warren claimed his fifth. Richardson caught and bowled. It's all happening. It was a thumbs-up performance, sadly cut short by the weather. A rainstorm forcing players from the ground. Warren's figures five for 25 from 14 overs, giving him 10 for the match so far and a career total of 299. As Australia's second highest wicket taker, he's just 56 behind Dennis Lilly. And at just 27 years of age, the experts are certain he'll overtake the great... South Africa still trails by 49 runs, Warren leading the way for the Aussies. Here's Michael Roberts. Once again, shallow potholes were forming for the South African quicks, and they seemed to trouble them in the morning session, with Healy and McGrath adding 29 runs, a lead of 134. Could be out, no, he's home. Well run, Glenn McGrath. McGrath finally fell, but he showed more resistance than the tourist top order. A slower ball trapping Kirsten for a duck. Immediately, McGrath welcomed Callis to the crease. Uh, straight away, good morning, Mr Callis. Ponting snapped up Barker off rifle, then Warne was hurried into the attack, and in almost a carbon copy of his dismissal in Melbourne, Cronje lost his wicket at bat pad. Ponting's reflexes were faultless, and batting techniques looked good in the dressing room, but actually facing Warne, the South Africans had no idea. Even Blewett showed them his version of the flipper. McMillan bowled around his legs, the visitors five for 41. Warned signalling there was more to come, and all of Pollock's practising made little difference. The all-rounder made just four. In the same over, Richardson gone without scoring. Got him! Oh, it's all happening! Unbelievable. But as fast as South Africa was crumbling, storm clouds were building. Yes, yes, yes! What a catch! Beautifully bowled! Unbelievable. ...for those two respectively. Got up to 421, 62 for Ricky Ponting, who I thought played very well. And uh, the last wicket partnership there with Healy and McGrath realised 36 runs and valuable runs as it turned out. They collapsed in the middle, Warren just cut right through them. 113 they were all out for, 134 the lead, mind you, if they'd managed to get up to that figure, the Australians would have had to bat again. We've had rain here this afternoon. It came at Warren to Callis. Brilliant delivery. Round the wicket. He'd hit him on the pads three times, and then, instead of bowling the leg break, he bowled him the top spinner and got through the most minute gap imaginable. Pat Simcox was knocked over by Paul Rifle via the pad, but won the jag back from outside off stump. It was a beautiful piece of bowling from Rifle after Mark Ward had been on that end. And Alan Dodd out at the end. That is Ian Healy's 200th catch in test matches in Australia. Right at the moment the rain came. Couldn't have been better for Mark Taylor and for Paul Rifle. He finished up with three for 14 in 12 overs and three maidens. McGrath one for eight. And Shane wore the star, uh, wore the star of everything there. Australia has won the second test against South Africa at the SCG after a magnificent display of leg spin bowling by Shane Warne. Warne routed the Proteas batting lineup, taking six wickets for a total of 11 in the match. Rain only delayed the inevitable. South Africa all out for 113, 21 runs short of Australia's first innings total. Ian Healy and Glenn McGrath added 29 runs this morning, further frustrating South Africa until they finally took the last wicket, conceding a 134-run lead to Australia. As he bowled Jacques Callis for 45, 
to become only the second Australian after Dennis Lilly to reach 300. Pat Simcox's belligerent stand took him to 38 before Rifle broke Warren's sequence and Simcox's stumps. Beautifully bowled. The rain was still falling when Rifle took the wicket that won Australia the test by an innings and 21 runs. Mark Chester, ABC News. And Shane Warren, and uh, he's got a big, uh, a beautiful looking bit of cut glass to put some champagne in there. You can take that away. There's no check for you, unfortunately. Oh, thanks, Congratulations. <laughs> wonderful performance. Um, and also a wonderful moment for you, late in the day. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a great performance. It didn't, uh, looked a bit dodgy there when the rain started coming down. Didn't look like we we're going to get back out there. But uh, luckily we did. And uh, I think we only had one ball up our sleeve. It started to rain again. And uh, it was good poor off. We got that last wicket. Now, just let's go back to Melbourne. Bowled a lot of overs in Melbourne. Came to this test uh, when they won the toss. I mean, you, I, I suspect you might have been peeping through the window as the coin went up in the air. Well, they had to get me off the bench first. <laughs> I was just <laughs> trying to get a few Zs, hoping Tub would win the toss. But... Uh, uh, yeah, it was a bit, uh, obviously the toss was important here. I thought, uh, like Mark said, the, it was big. We had to try and get them out for, I thought, under 250. Uh, I thought we bowled well. Uh, five for 20 on the day one, I thought the wicket was an absolute belter. And, uh, you know, I thought we just bowled and fielded really, really well. And as the game went on, I thought we batted well. And uh, obviously today we bowled very well. The, the, uh, the 300s, I mean, very special moment. Um, mm. Did you, I mean, I said to you this morning, uh, what's going to happen today, isn't it? You said something about Melbourne. So, I mean, uh, what, what, what are your real, uh, what's, what is your ideal scenario for the 300s? Well, uh, I think the wicket I took with Chuck Kellis, uh, I think he's probably their best player at the moment. And uh, he's playing very well. And I just wanted to go around the wicket and, um, you know, just trying to get him kick a few away. Have a talk us through it. Well, I just decided there, I just decided to bowl a top spinner because everything was turning and uh, he was kicking it away. So I thought I'd bowl one a little bit straighter and make him try and play and maybe try and drive it, but uh, a <laughs> little bit excited there, I suppose. Or <laughs> over the top or whatever you want to call it, but uh, <laughs> obviously it was a, I never usually set myself targets, but uh, this year I set myself a, a target to try and get 300 test wickets. And I thought if we could do that, we'll probably win both series. And uh, you know, hopefully now we can uh, go into Adelaide and win 2-0. I think we should look at that again, actually. I enjoyed that. It was wonderful. I mean, uh, let's yeah. have a look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely wonderful. So, top spinner, just through the gate. Yeah, and, yeah. I just, um, well, he was kicking them away and he liked to sweep. He played the sweep yeah. pretty well. And I uh, thought I'd bowl a top spin a bit straighter to get him driving. And uh, thankfully, he missed it. There we are. There you see there, a bit of overspin on the ball. And uh, went forward to try and drive like I wanted him to. And uh, just snuck through there. That was the end of that. Well, look, congratulations. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure watching you bowl over the years. It's, uh, it's one of the milestones. What's the next one? Whew, retirement, probably. <laughs> Don't know when that's going to come. Hopefully a long way down the track. Well, very well bowled in this test match. Congratulations to you and, and your side. Thank you. Well, there we are, Shane Warne. And yes, yes, yes. What a catch. Beautifully bowled. Spinning across Pollock. This is magnificent bowling. Presentation of Nines Wide World of Sports, your Commonwealth Games Network.